Good morning and welcome. It's so fantastic to see you all face to face on this beautiful day in Government House. My name's Michaela Bensley. I'm the Interim Chief Executive of the, the SACE Board. Um, and before we commence the official proceedings, I'd like to just acknowledge that we meet on the land of the Ghana people and that their spiritual relationship to the land is as important today as it always was and always will be. We pay deep respects to the elders, both past, present and emerging, and we thank them for allowing us to meet on this land. Just some housekeeping before we get into the great uh, event of celebrating the achievements of these young people to our left. Um, in the uh, rare event of evacuation, there's emergency wardens and they'll escort us out in a safe way. Toilets, if you need them, are to the left. Uh, there'll be a photo taken of every recipient. How to access those photos are in the front cover of your booklet. And you can also follow the instructions that come with the QR code. Um, there'll be an opportunity after the formal event to wander around the grounds and take photos wherever you like, particularly in front of Government House. Seems to be a popular spot. Um, the event is also being streamed live at the moment, so it'll also be on our website. Uh, we'll put that up next week. Um, and just make sure that your phones are on silent. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, families, parents, and most importantly, the merit recipients of 2021. I'm really delighted to be able to welcome you all to the SACE Merit Ceremony. Fantastic to be able to meet here on these grounds and have a face-to-face -face event on a beautiful day like today. I'd like to also just acknowledge that we're lucky enough to be able to meet on these grounds and thank the, uh, Her Excellency the Honourable Frances Adamson for the generosity of allowing us to meet here today. This is the 34th event that we've been able to host on these grounds, so we're really fortunate and supportive of that relationship. I'd like to really uh, acknowledge the huge effort of our SACE Merit recipients. Um, over the next two days, we're holding kind of nine sessions to celebrate these students, they are 100, like 1,016 students who've received over 1,280 merits across a huge range of subjects. They're, all their hard work and persistence is really evident in the excellence that they've been able to achieve, and they've been the highest performing students in these subjects areas. So congratulations for all the hard work that's gotten you here. I think also on reflection, it's extraordinary, um, particularly because your whole SACE experience has now been within the context of a pandemic. There's been um, unexpected and unforeseen challenges thrown by that. We didn't even know what remote learning really would look like. I never really used to Teams until three years ago, and now that that's the main way we do, we do our work. So really recognising that within that level of complexity around being able to pivot and change and um, yeah, some of the uncertainty that brought, I think that your achievement is even um, more profound and really deserving of the celebration we have today. Obviously, individual achievement usually doesn't happen on its own, so I'd like to really recognise the support of your support mechanisms, your family, your parents, not um, least of which also your teachers, that were, able, that were able to support you to the success that you've achieved throughout uh, your year 12. Um, and also just recognise that having achieved the SACE, the culmination of 13 years of schooling, the opportunity that that provides to open doors for you and lead you to whatever passions and drive that you have in the future in terms of whatever direction that you're heading. I'm hopeful that you've also been able to, given that we're halfway through this year, been able to really experience a little taste of what your future might look like. Um, so. I want us all to just recognise the huge achievement of these students. Congratulations, you finished school, you've got your SAIS, and you also achieved excellence in at least one subject. So congratulations to you all. Well done, you did it. <laughs> so again, thank you. I'd like to introduce uh, Victor, uh, Virginia Thompson, who's one of our faculty managers, who will introduce our guest speaker and guest presenter for today, and then we'll start the ceremony in terms of the um, presentation of certificates. So thank you again. Thank you, Michaela, and good morning, everyone. My name is Virginia Thompson. I'm a faculty manager for Health and Humanities at the SACE Board of South Australia. 
And I'm delighted to be here with you today to celebrate the extraordinary achievements of our SACE merit recipients in subjects within the Faculty of Health and Humanities. Now, every year we have a special guest presenter, and in this morning's ceremony, you may feel very familiar with this guest already, despite perhaps not having met her personally. And so, it is my great pleasure to introduce our very special guest, Professor Nicola Spurrier, Chief Public Health Officer for the Department for Health and Wellbeing of South Australia. Good morning. It is such a privilege to be here with you. When I had this uh, invitation come into my email, I thought, this is one I really don't want to miss. Um, getting out of my office and being amongst young people who have achieved so much. So thank you very much for the invitation. I just would like to acknowledge myself, uh, the Ghana people and the lands that we meet on, and also to acknowledge any other Aboriginal person that might be here at this ceremony today. Now, I thought you might be interested in learning a little bit more about me and perhaps where I did my education. So let's start with that. So one of the things that uh, I have really fond memories about is that my parents placed an enormous value on the role of education and developed in me a love of learning. And I've got a deep sense of connection with my family because of this, and particularly with my parents. Now, I was, a, I was born in Dunedin in New Zealand, and as a little Kiwi, I was taken over to the US, to Albany, New York, and I started school there. And in the US, you start school at six, but I was only five. And my mother was very keen that I didn't fall behind when I went back to New Zealand. So I was enrolled in correspondence school, and in those days, that was done over the radio and with snail mail. We didn't have emails, and you couldn't afford to make a toll call on the phone. And so um, I remember sitting at the kitchen bench with my mother and, and using buttons, and my father was there teaching me about different cultures and making me do projects and such like, so that I could enrol in the US um, school at the age of five. And of course, I went back to New Zealand and then I came to Australia. But the, the early memories I have of my parents sitting next to me and helping me and teaching me to learn uh, is just one of, those, uh, one of the most fondest things that I have. Now, that continued that support right through to high school and to university, and my mother in particular has a really strong mathematical brain, and in year 11 and 12, when I was doing maths one and two, and I'd come to see her with my textbook, and she wouldn't have done maths for years, but she was able to work through the book and, and explain things to me. And then in medical school, uh, my father was a, a microbiologist and one of the lecturers at Adelaide University. And I still have his lecture notes, and they were brilliant lecture notes, and it's all about which antibiotic to use for which bacteria. My mother's a pathologist, and one of the other beautiful memories I have at university is uh, my sister and I would be looking at histology slides, and uh, mum would bring in a cup of tea and some bickies, and we'd sit there and have sort of a girls' chat, but be looking at a histology slides. So again, this uh, very close interaction between learning and, and that family life um, really instilled in me this lifelong love of learning. Uh, so really, I'm now going to, I'm trying to talk to you as well uh, as part of this um, presentation to you as students, but I'm going to face your parents now and absolutely thank them for all the support that you have given to your young people over their whole ed education from kindergarten and right up. Um, but of course, schools and teachers are also incredibly important for ensuring every student is supported. And I'm very proud that in South Australia, we had the fewest days of shutdown of nearly all the other Australian jurisdictions. And I had this uh, idea in my head that schools would be the last to shut down and the first to open, because I just think they're so important in young people's lives. Can I also just briefly thank you for wearing the mask? I know it's a pain in the neck, but also your hand washing. Um, that has been brilliant. 
Now, I went to Norwood High School. Uh, that was actually the first school in South Australia that had a computer, and the computer took up a whole office suite because in those days they were enormous and there was a, um, a ventilation system that had to run 24-7 because of the heat that this computer generated. Now, the only thing I think it produced was uh, um, calendars and they had uh, cartoons of Snoopy and Charlie Brown. So it was pretty basic. Um, but of course, technology is not what schools are about. It's about the teachers. And um, I really want to acknowledge the support that your teachers have given you, not just in teaching you things, but also, of course, um, all of the other uh, care um, that you require when you are under stress. Uh, and I've got um, children that have graduated fa fairly recently from school, and I know um, a lot about that. Uh, now, in terms of your future careers, I do have a couple of words of wisdom for you. The first thing is try and do things for the right reasons. Try to leave the world in a better place, to leave a legacy for the future. Now, this might be through a strong sense of social justice and equity. I know this uh, particular session, uh, many of you will be thinking about profession in, in uh, um, a professional career in the caring professions, such as medicine or nursing or one of the allied health or maybe you have a passion about protecting our fragile planet. Um, but having that passion and doing things for the right reason, I think, is really important. Now, my passion, the thing I get out of bed in the morning, is um, I want to stop people getting sick. I want to prevent people getting sick. And that's actually what my job is in public health, population health, is preventing people um, having to need to go to hospital. And that's what my focus is. Now, the second thing I would like to um, uh, mention to you and, and uh, let you think about is to try and keep up that passion, that love of learning. Uh, in 2018, I decided, because um, I you know, keep wanting to learn something new, I got out my oboe. So I, when I was a school student, I'd played the oboe for a couple of years. And just before the pandemic, I managed to sit my grade three oboe exam and pass it. And I was going to start uh, practicing for grade five. The grade four music wasn't as good, so I thought I'd go straight to grade five. But unfortunately, I had the pandemic turn up. Um, but just as an example, uh, you know, think about things outside of your career, something new that you can learn about, uh, because I think that's what continues your um, interest and passion in your career as well. Now, I'm going to end, but I would like to acknowledge uh, that there has been a lot of uncertainty for you as young people. The world seems to have been upended. There's the pandemic, but there's also climate change, and there's the terrible conflicts that we've seen around in the world. Dare I also say that it looks like the boomers are taking everything. And so for many of you, you're worried about what the future's going to be like, whether you can afford to buy a house, whether you can even do that wonderful dream travel that you'd been hoping for. But I'm a very positive person. And one of the reasons I'm very positive is that every day I meet young people like you, and I am astounded with the compassion, the energy, the wisdom, and, and um, the, the uh, determination shown by young people. And that's what makes me positive. So please be strong, and please don't be afraid to say what you need to say. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Spurrier, for your wonderful address, full of wisdom and passion and warmth, and I love the connection with lifelong learning and education. And as a dual qualified medical specialist in public health physician and a pediatrician specializing in implementing these policies, it's really an inspiration to us all. So thank you very much, Professor Spurrier. Okay. Um, we would now like to invite our merit scholars to the stage to receive their award from P Professor Spurrier. As I read out the names, I ask that you please reserve your applause until all students have been introduced. Merit recipient, Ilya Aidmund, Legal Studies. Ardash Anu, Geography.
Sonelli Athu Korala, Physical Education. Jake Baker, Religion Studies. Cloda Berry, Geography. Abby Beach, Health and Wellbeing. Nicholas Burgock, Women's Studies. Georgina Birchall, Physical Education. Winter Burkett, Modern History. Abby Campbell, Food and Hospitality. Tanisha Kawas, Child Studies. Taylor Chancellor, Food and Hospitality. Eliza Corbin, Physical Education. Matilda Cotton, Modern History. Lillian Cowell, Outdoor Education. Jenna Cuff, Child Studies. Grace Davy, Legal Studies. Ella Dixon, Child Studies. Annabelle Dolling, Physical Education. Amelia Dolphin, Physical Education. Amelia Grace Dowd, Food and Hospitality. Olivia Egar, Modern History. Tiana Fernandez, Health and Wellbeing. Seamus Flaherty, Outdoor Education. Katie Gingell, Food and Hospitality. Matt Goldwyn, Legal Studies. Lily Gunn, Food and Hospitality. Joanna Haddad, Society and Culture. Lucy 
Hall, Food and Hospitality. Jasmine Janish, Health and Wellbeing. Andrew Jenke, Food and Hospitality. Emma Jolly, Physical Education. Audrey Jones, Physical Education. Elena Katsabis, Food and Hospitality. Sophia Keyes, Ancient Studies. Danielle Kingsland, Food and Hospitality. Bailey Kramer, Outdoor Education. Kate Kiros, Geography. Victoria Lane, Physical Education. Abby Rose McDonald, Health and Wellbeing. Portia Marshall, Physical Education. Ellen Maiella, Physical Education. Princess Katrina Manguera, Society and Culture. Madison Martin, Child Studies. Bridie Mathy, Food and Hospitality. Charles McKay, Economics. Charlotte Moore, Food and Hospitality. Ellie Morrissey, Religion Studies. James Mortimer, Media Studies. Georgia Muir, Physical Education. Sarah Muir, Physical Education. Devika Maherji, Philosophy. Olivia Mulvaney, Outdoor Education. Eveline Akwankwa Nongbera, Health and Wellbeing. Elizabeth Payne, Outdoor Education. Helena Peters, Food and Hospitality.
James Purdy, Society and Culture. Phoebe Roger, Modern History. Tanika Rollins, Health and Wellbeing. Ella Ross, Outdoor Education. Charlie Sandery, Outdoor Education. Sophie Smith, Religion Studies. Lily Rose Spartalis, Physical Education. Paris Spillane, Health and Wellbeing. Cassidy Tamlin, Food and Hospitality. Amber Tilly, Food and Hospitality. Ebony Toogood, Health and Wellbeing. Alyssa Tripodi, Food and Hospitality. Amelia Vlachavis, Physical Education. Grace Wakelin, Food and Hospitality. Samuel Warwick, Geography. Jemima Weiss, Modern History. Jessica Wildey, Physical Education. Lily Williams, Health and Wellbeing. Can you please join me in thanking and congratulating all scholars who have received merit awards today? And can you please also join me in thanking our very special guest presenter, Professor Nicholas Spurrier, Professor Spurrier continues to take a personal focus on the health and well-being of every South Australian. Thank you. Now, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes our official proceedings of the 2022 Merit Ceremony presentations to our 2021 Merit recipients for Health and Humanities subjects. On behalf of the SACE Board of South Australia, thank you for attending today's ceremony and for helping make this a very special occasion for young people who have achieved excellence in their SACE. So congratulations once again to all merit recipients and please do enjoy the beautiful grounds. The sun has come out for us today, which is wonderful, and to take some very special photographs to capture the moment. Thank you. <laughs>